Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Fire breaks out at home late last night on San Antonio's north side. We have details just ahead. And the state's new abortion law is getting both praise and criticism. We're going to have what happens next following the Supreme Court's decision to uphold it. Unbelievably hot around here. Will it stay that way through the entire Labor Day weekend? We will check in with Justin in just a moment. He has the answers. Good morning, everybody. We made it to Friday. It is September 3rd. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. And it's a Friday before Labor Day weekend. And it was a scorcher yesterday. What's are things looking like as we go into the long holiday weekend? Justin, what is the update? Uh, pretty much the same. same. We've hit our hottest stretch of the year. Last couple of days, we hit 99 again yesterday. We're going to be right there this weekend. Nothing really changes, although we'll take rain chances out in the forecast this weekend. So that's really kind of a, a bad thing, I suppose. Uh, 99 was the high yesterday, 101 in Pleasanton, 104 in Katua, 102 Del Rio. I could go on, but you get the idea here. It was awful hot. Temperatures are in the 70s and even still some 80s out there right now. 81 Stinson, 75 Randolph, 74 Comfort, 77 right now. In Tarpley, there are some morning clouds. Here's some of the headlines. Today, here we go again uh, with temperatures right back where they were yesterday. If you're doing some traveling, Decent travel conditions across the state of Texas and really most of the country. I checked in on some of the uh, delays. There, there aren't really as far as airports are concerned across the country. And this weekend, will we hit 100? That's the big question. We may end our streak of zero 100 degree days this year. Forecast calls for a 20% chance rain this afternoon. We're up around uh, 96, 97 for a high. Southeast Chile winds 5 to 15 miles per hour and partly cloudy skies. There are a few changes in the forecast next week. Maybe a few more thunderstorms back in the forecast. We'll discuss that in just a few minutes. But Stevens in early this morning. We've got some issues on the roads. Yeah, on, I'll, I'll ready, Justin. As we can take a look here at Loop 6 and 4 at Brown, we got some flashing lights out there this morning. Uh, traveling through that area, you're going to want to be extra careful. Let's take a closer look there at Transguide, and you can see right now we have two lanes blocked there on 1604 because of a crash that was reported. Came in just a few minutes before 4 this morning. Let's take a look at the map right now. See how that's shaping up right now. You don't see any delays with traffic in those eastbound lanes of 1604, but it is reported right at Braun Road. I'm going to go ahead and jump over on the other side to a stall that's been reported though here off I-35 northbound at George Beach Avenue. Check those vehicles before you hit the roadway. We know a lot of folks are going to be traveling for the Labor Day weekend, so we want to make sure you get to where you need to be on time and safely. And of course, make sure you have some fun as well. But as we take a look out at the map in the wider scope of it, uh, still pretty green around the Alamo City and our roadways. So let's check those inbound times. If you plan on traveling here to San Antonio in the next few moments, coming in from Bernie on I-10, we're looking at 26 minutes it's right now and 27 on 281 from Bolverde and 26 coming in from 35 and New Braunfels. But that doesn't seem to be the issue right now. The big issue that we're going to be watching, at least for now, is going to be this crash off Loop 1604 again in these eastbound lanes. Two lanes are blocked off because we do have first responders working to clear the scene. Just be sure to move over and slow down. Looks like they should be wrapping up soon, but we'll be watching that closely and see how that impacts that morning drive. Mark and Steph. Thank you, sir. New this morning, fire investigators are looking at what caused a big fire last night on the north side. It happened in the 300 block of Don Ridge, just south of Jackson Keller. A battalion chief says the home was vacant, but there was a ton of stuff that had been left behind inside. He says a vehicle was seen driving away from the scene, so investigators think the fire may have been set on purpose. Fire crews were able to put it out pretty quickly. No one was hurt. Here in Bear County, hospitalizations for COVID-19 patients down to 1,268. 31 of those patients are children. The city also reporting 23 new COVID-related deaths. While the trend in hospitalizations is sloping downward, Metro Health is saying to stay cautious and not to let your guard down, especially this Labor Day weekend. Now, Supreme Court's decision to uphold the new abortion law here in Texas. Several states are now taking steps to pass similar laws. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has more. This morning, a new legal challenge after the state of Texas banned nearly all abortions in the state. Planned Parenthood now filing a restraining order seeking to end the new law's financial incentive. That incentive allows private citizens to sue anyone for helping a woman gain access to an abortion if she's further along than six weeks pregnant. 
because it doesn't have any state official charged with enforcing it. Instead, the ban gets enforced by private parties who can sue any abortion provider or anyone who aids or abets an abortion. There are no exceptions for rape or incest, only for medical emergencies. Texas State the Senator Angela Paxton defending that is, part of the law. It is recognizing that the baby is a human life and abortion ends a human life. Late Wednesday, the Supreme Court rejected a request to block the law. Five conservative justices saying the law should take effect. Now Texas is providing other states with a blueprint to imposing new abortion restrictions without the Supreme Court having to revisit Roe v. Wade. In the meantime, President Biden is blasting the court's decision, saying it unleashes constitutional chaos and empowers self-anointed enforcers to have devastating impacts. We and White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki uh, engaging on the today. issue uh, with a male reporter. Why does the president support abortion when his own Catholic faith teaches abortion is morally wrong? He believes that it's up to a woman to make those decisions. I know you've never faced those choices, nor have you ever been pregnant. But for women out there who have faced those choices, this is an incredibly difficult thing. A doctor we spoke with in Houston says he typically performs between 20 and 30 abortions per day. But since the new law, he's performed only three. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Days after Hurricane Ida battered Louisiana, President Joe Biden is expected to visit the state today. According to a press release, the president will survey damage from the hurricane. He also plans to meet with state and local leaders from impacted communities. He will reportedly tour a neighborhood and get an aerial view of the situation as well. After the tours, the president will deliver remarks on his administration's response to Ida. Meanwhile, the Biden administration is tapping the nation's strategic petroleum reserve in response to the damage caused by Ida. That will release 1.5 million barrels of crude to help meet demand. The decision comes as two-thirds of the service stations in New Orleans and Baton Rouge are out of gas in the hurricane's aftermath. Meanwhile, regulators say more than 93 percent of the Gulf of Mexico's oil production remains offline. The Department of Energy says adding to the crisis is the fact that the Mississippi River has been closed due to several sunken vessels. To get tanker trucks rolling, the Biden administration is relaxing standards, enabling truck drivers to legally work longer hours. The Caldor Fire in Northern California, one of the few wildfires to cross from one side of the vast Sierra Nevada mountains range to the other. The fast moving fire has burned more than 210,000 acres so far. Cal Fire says containment has reached 25% firefighters are working to prevent further encroachment in the Tahoe Basin. Easing winds may help them gain the upper hand. Officials are warning residents they should expect to stay out of their homes for the next couple of days. President Biden approved an emergency declaration for that area, clearing the path to provide federal relief to the state. The Caldor Fire is the 15th largest wildfire in California state history. Right now it's 437, about 79 degrees. And coming up next, some high school football action as the number one ranked team leads off our big game coverage. Outside with live cam, lots of clouds, lots of humidity, more of the same. But hey, it's a holiday weekend. We're going to enjoy anyway. We'll be right back. Welcome back. The number one ranked team in 12's top 12 leading off our big game coverage this week is the Brennan Bears visit Lindhoff Stadium last night to face the Clemens Buffalo second quarter Brennan down by three. They're knocking on the door of the end zone running back Jason Love taking it right through the heart of the Clemens D for the score. A little later Bears take it to the air. Ashton DuBose buying time as he breaks the pocket to find Love and they would score again. Final from Lindhoff Stadium Brennan 27 Clemens 10. Our KSAT 12 MeTV and Texas Sports Productions Game of the Week took place at Gus Stadium last night. Brandeis Broncos taking on the Warren Warriors first quarter. There was no score until running back Chris Rodriguez delivers a 12 yard touchdown off tackles uh, untouched to make it seven to nothing Broncos final for Gus Stadium. Brandeis wins 21 to seven. Don't forget to join us on our big game coverage app this week for live broadcasts of other Texas high school football games in and around San Antonio, courtesy of Texas Sports Productions. It'll, this week it will include a big one. It's Judson versus Lake Travis live from Austin. Big 12 considering replacements for Texas and OU after Longhorns and Sooners decide to move the SEC starting perhaps as early as next season. Among the teams under consideration, according to ESPN, Houston and BYU. That's because the Big 12 will be down to eight teams when those other two teams depart. Also under consideration are Cincinnati and University of Central Florida. 
Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. In less than a week, the Cowboys kick off the 2021 season against the defending Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers in Tampa. To get ready, Cowboys have brought back three players off the COVID reserve list. That includes wide receiver CeeDee Lamb, safety DeMonte Casey, and defensive tackle Carlos Watkins on Wednesday. Cowboys picked up a quarter, uh, quarterback Will Greer after he was waived by the Panthers. There was a question if the Cowboys showed any interest in former number one pick Cam Newton after he was waived by the Patriots. The short answer, no, after being scouted by members of the co coaching staff. Now to Missions Baseball. Last night, a back and forth battle saw four lead changes, but those slippery sod poodles of Amarillo managed to come out victorious thanks to a four run inning in the eighth. Final score Amarillo wins six to five. The series against those pesky sod poodles continues tonight at 7.05. Is Fernando Tatis Jr. flying chonkless bobblehead giveaway night? The first 2,000 fans will get one of the coveted bobbleheads. Scheme starts around. 705. All right, but they can face the sod poodles again on Sunday, right? Mm -hmm. I think it, I think it continues into this weekend. All right, mm -hmm. they're fierce. Okay, time now 443 and 79 degrees. Coming up next, a first look at how many are having to deal with flooded basements in the wake of Hurricane Ida. And welcome back. It's 446. Hurricane Ida has left many homeowners with flooded basements with many days of cleanup ahead. ABC's Becky Worley has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, what to do with a flooded basement? Natural disasters, they often strike with such little warning that we get stunned. It's a home horror show. Roads awash, sewers overflowing, and basements filled with water. Matt Reisinger is a contractor in Texas who worked through the Hurricane Harvey flooding disaster and says recovery can happen with some tools you may already have. And you really want to think about your personal protective equipment. That water can have bacteria in it. He stresses documenting the damage for insurance purposes. Floor, ceiling, walls, everything. Next, throw out what's damaged. But that's not all. Coming up at 7 a.m., we're going to walk you through all the steps to make sure your basement is dry and mold free. Plus, what you can do to protect your space before the next big storm. With your GMA First Look, I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland, California. I don't know about you, Steph, but I'm stressed just watching what people are having to deal yeah, with out there right now. It's terrible, and mm. it'll be a long time until they get things under control again. Um, yes, it will. 447 right now on your Friday. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos, who was here a little earlier because we had some problems on the roadway. Yeah, good morning. Uh, we did have some issues out there off Loop 1604 at Braun Road, where we did have that crash. You see from that shot of Transguide, with those flashing lights have since gone away, so indicating that that crash has since cleared out, but we do see some remaining road flares. So just use caution driving through the area, but that was reported over here off Loop 1604 eastbound again right at Braun Road. Two lanes were blocked off for a little while. That crash came in just before four this morning. Thankfully, it has cleared out, but we are spotting some other problems out there on the road this hour. Over here on State Highway 151 eastbound at Hunt Lane, another crash reported out there. There are no trans guide cameras in that particular spot, so just use caution driving through there and again, always move over and slow down for those first responders. Let's go ahead and jump over here, though. Still this stall off I-35 northbound at George Beach Avenue. We know a lot of people are going to be getting on the roadways for this Labor Day weekend, so be sure to check those vehicles before you hit the roadways. And we are seeing a minor slowdown here off I-10 eastbound at East Houston Street with traffic moving at 36 miles per hour. But that looks like it is slowly improving. So let's go ahead and take a look at the wider view of the map. As you can see right now, it's looking a little busy and active. We're also seeing some sort of slowdown there off 1604. I believe in the eastbound lanes, there 35. So we're going to be watching that, see how it does impact that morning drive. But as we take one last Let's look at Transguide US 90 Montgomery looking like an I Love Lucy episode over there, but I 10 a days of all in color. We are going to be watching these roads closely and coming up a little bit later on this morning. Of course, we have construction to be on the lookout for and gas prices as people are going to possibly be fueling up for those road trips this long Labor Day weekend, guys. Yeah, they might take, take some few road trips. Folks have some outdoor plans, perhaps. So what can they expect, Justin? Mm -hmm. More heat. We keep it going. Yesterday was a blistering day. Temperatures up to 99 here in San Antonio, a lot of the state in the uh, upper 90s, if not triple digits. We've really hit our summer stride here in September, uh, the way these temperatures are looking. High pressure, of course, uh, as you might imagine, is behind all this, centered over North Texas right now. There is a little disturbance over Louisiana that is going to work through South Texas today. 
It's not very strong, but it could kick up a shower or two. We saw that yesterday. Same boat today. That high pressure is not right over top of us. It opens the door just a little bit. Uh, just a little bit of a crack there for some showers and storms possibly to work their way in. We mentioned travel. Uh, Stephen just talked about that. Uh, good travel across the state. There could be a few thunderstorms along the coast this morning, but if you're heading to South Padre, Port A, uh, El Paso, Houston, Dallas, you name it, it's all good. Uh, just the heat's going to be the main problem there. Looking at the radar, we've got some showers just offshore. Uh, we've detected a few very light showers across uh, some of our eastern counties here. We'll see some light showers this morning as we fast forward in time here and go into the afternoon hours. One or two downpours may make their way towards San Antonio. We saw that yesterday. Most everything that developed yesterday was quickly developed and then quickly fell apart. So I think uh, that'll probably be the case again today. Mostly cloudy right now, 79 at the airport. We're already looking at 81 at Stinson. A late southeast chilly breeze and temperatures at 77 in Divine, 77 in New Braunfels, 75 out there at Randolph, and 76 currently in Bandera with a little bit of cloud cover there. Uh, 82 Catula, 76 Kennedy, and again Del Rio uh, at 85. Just such a warm morning. Uh, dew points are in the mid 70s, and you know, just about everywhere you go, and dew, and dew points that high are going to lend themselves to some. Very high heat indices this afternoon. Forecast heat index here in San Antonio, 105. Even in Kerrville, the heat index is going to be around 100 today. So be careful out there. And looking at the forecast going forward, high pressure sort of wobbles around here. That's going to make for a hot weekend. If you're looking for a glimmer of hope, uh, Labor Day, late in the day, that high pressure breaks down a little bit. We're going to get a boundary coming in from North Texas. That may be just enough to kick off some showers and storms. Don't think it'll be that widespread, but some isolated stuff possible. That probably continues over into Tuesday. But after that, high pressure builds back in, and here we go again with this heat. We had avoided it all summer, it felt like, but uh, it is here now, and uh, it's going to be a toasty weekend. 99 Saturday, Sunday, 20% chance of rain Monday, 30% chance Tuesday, hopefully we'll get some cooling showers there. And then beyond that, it uh, basically heats back up. So watching the tropics too, not a lot out there. Nothing that uh, we're going to worry about right now anyway. Right now. Right now, yeah. Just the heat. Just the heat. <laughs> yeah. And that is plenty. Yes. Thank you, Justin. 452 on your Friday, about 79 degrees. And coming up next, a new documentary goes behind the scenes of the most followed person on TikTok. Let's take a look at your lottery numbers. Pick three, one, eight, zero, Fireball six. Your daily four number, seven, three, eight, five, Fireball four. Cash five, 11, 12, 13, 23, 32. Texas two step, we have 19, 21, 25, 30. Bonus ball two, good luck. Marvel is hoping for another big weekend in theaters, plus details on a new documentary featuring the most popular person on TikTok. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. It could be a record-setting holiday weekend at the box office. Marvel's Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings makes its debut only in theaters. And if you don't know star Simu Liu's name, you're gonna. It's his first lead film role, likely won't be his last, and he tells us he's trying hard to take it all in. To fly my parents down to L.A. and have them walk beside me on a red carpet in Hollywood with a poster with my face on it. I mean, it really just, it doesn't get better than that. Also out now, a modern take on the classic fairy tale Cinderella. It stars singer Camila Cabello, also in her first lead movie role. She's the first Cuban-Mexican woman to star in the story, and she tells me she feels a lot like the character she plays. I definitely relate to that feeling of like, um, just like wanting something so bad and, you know, having insecurity and doubt and all of that along the way. Cinderella dropped today on Amazon Prime Video. Also out today, The Demelio Show on Hulu documents the life of the most followed person on TikTok. 17-year-old Charlie Demelio, her popular singer sister Dixie, and their parents as they try to navigate fame and the attention that comes with it. And the fifth and final season of the wildly popular series Money Heist hits Netflix. And provocative actor Charlie Sheen with a birthday today, he's 56. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Time now is 456 and about 79 degrees. Parts of the Northeast U.S. still trying to get things back to normal after devastating flooding caused by the remnants of Ida. How you can help with the recovery. And start saving your money now. Apple is reportedly getting closer to the production of an electric car. Details coming up in Tech Bites. 
Transguide right now, see how things are looking out there. Looking live 35 at Main, the southbound lanes upper and lower. There's I-10 at Probant. No problems on these cameras, but that could change in a moment's notice. We'll talk to Stephen a little bit later on. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, a stunned East Coast still facing a rising death toll after the rem remnants of Hurricane Ida wall up the region with record-breaking rain. Outside with live camp, brutal heat and humidity continue here in South Texas. Justin's forecast coming up for your long Labor Day weekend. And good morning, everybody. We made it to Friday. Finally, it is September 3rd. Happy Friday. Yay. Uh, it's going to be a hot one, but at least for those with outdoor plans, it uh, doesn't look like there will be any rain. That's right. So that's both a blessing and a curse if you have big outdoor plans. It's true. Stay cool. Find a way to stay cool. Maybe you're heading to the rivers this weekend. <laughs> Get our floating forecast here. Temperature is going to be in the upper 90s both days. Uh, have some refreshments with you, preferably water, but you know, it is the uh, it is river. You do what you like. Mostly sunny skies Saturday and Sunday, 99 degrees. Uh, those morning temperatures will be in the mid 70s. Uh, a hot weekend, yes, and we're going to see some hot temperatures going into next week too. In the meantime, we've got a couple showers showing up on radar. Let's uh, show you where those are around Quero, over towards Howitzville. These are tracking north. Uh, these won't last very long, and we don't expect that we'll see much here in San Antonio, but we'll keep an eye on the radar. And there could be a few isolated showers and storms this afternoon too. Temperatures upper 70s at the airport, 75 Randolph, still 81 down there at Stinson, 76 Divine, 76 in Uvalde, and some of those morning clouds sticking around. Forecast for today calls for high uh, in the upper 90s, uh, about a 20% chance of rain during the afternoon hours. Southeasterly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. And uh, the tropics trying to heat up a little bit. We're going to take a look at that and see what uh, what the latest is going on out in the Atlantic in just a few minutes. Let's get over to Stephen, though. You've had some incidents already. That's right, Justin. Thankfully, uh, everything's looking pretty good right now. It's just checking some of the shots at Transguide. Pretty quiet. Uh, we did start off with a little bit of issues out there of 1604 at Braun. Thankfully, everything is resolved. Let's go ahead and take a closer look now as we take a view at different shots around Transguide. 1604 at Marbach shows a pretty quiet start there, getting a little bit busier in some parts in and around San Antonio. But let's go ahead and take you to the map right now. Uh, there is construction that's happening out there of I-10 eastbound from FM 1516 to White Cold Road. We've told you about this a few times earlier in the week to mark your calendars. Uh, it is a full closure out there in those I-10, e those eastbound lanes of I-10 that is, and you can see right now traffic's moving, but not very fast at 16 miles per hour. So do be prepared for those slowdowns. Uh, this should be wrapping up, though. It is uh, expected to be finishing around 5 a.m., and it's just a few minutes past, so we're hoping that won't cause any issues as people are going to be heading out the door in the next few moments. And as we take a wider look at the map, uh, very green. We started off with a little bit of color with some of those crashes off those uh, 1604 and State Highway 151, but those have since resolved and things are looking really good. And so are the inbound times. If you're traveling into the downtown San Antonio area in the next few moments, 29 minutes from Seguin, pretty green with on I-10. And if you are coming in from Lavernia, 22 minutes at this hour and 28 minutes from Floresville. Let's take one last look at Transguide 281 and San Pedro. Just a few folks out there this morning, guys, as always, watch the roads closely. We're keeping an eye out there as well. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. The dry out and cleanup process now going on across the Northeast following epic rainfall from what was left of Hurricane Ida. This morning, the death toll from the storm and its flooding is up to at least 46 people. Here's ABC's Faith Abube with more. This morning, new stories of heroism and tragedy in the wake of that devastating flood disaster across the Northeast. In Connecticut, a state trooper is among the people who did not survive. He's one of the senior sergeants on the state police, well respected, and um, it's just a tragedy. Sergeant Brian Mull was checking on conditions in Woodbury, where three rivers come together when floodwaters swept his patrol car away. In New York City, at least 13 people died when water filled homes and overwhelmed streets and the local transit system. The NYPD saying 835 subway passengers had to be rescued and nearly 500 vehicles across the city abandoned. 
In New Jersey, the death toll rising to 23. In Philadelphia, hundreds of calls for water rescues after the Schuylkill River spilled into communities. The water, as high as this overpass, flooding an expressway that runs through the heart of the city. Officials say a pump designed to clear the road failed. Here's what the expressway normally looks like. At a nearby apartment complex, the National Guard rescuing nearly a dozen people and their pets. We really appreciate it. You know, you don't really expect these types of things to happen when, you know, you're in a big building like this. In the meantime, experts following the science were attributing the frequency of extreme rainfall events to human-caused climate change. Forecasters warned about Wednesday night storms for days. The National Weather Service in New York City issued a flash flood watch back on Monday. But the intense rainfall proving to be too much for the local infrastructure. But in reality, what was once the 100-year flood, the flood that had about a 1% chance of happening in any given year, isn't the 100-year flood anymore. In New York, Faith Abube, ABC News. Here at home, the Red Cross working overtime for those recovery efforts following Ida. And there are many ways for San Antonio to step up and help. For us, this has been an interesting challenge because we've went from shelter operations and feeding in Louisiana to now going to Alabama, to Tennessee, to New York, and really just stretching a lot of our resources. And So right now, the Red Cross is working with four states to provide aid. So far, they've given out more than 17,000 meals and 800 cleanup kits. Red Cross are always looking for volunteers to help in local chapters as well as monetary donations. In fact, KSAC Community is partnering with the Red Cross to help collect donations. The Hurricane Ida phone bank is happening today right here on KSAT from noon to 7. All you do have to do is call the donate. We will provide the number later today to find out more ways to help out. Head to KSATcommunity.com. And also here at home, the coronavirus is keeping some athletes on the sidelines this high school football season. Athletic directors at Northeast ISD and Northside ISD say they're not playing around with COVID-19 this year. Student athletes faced similar challenges last year, but with a highly contagious Delta variant and a vaccine that can offer protection, coaches are drawing up the playbook. Last year we had a situation in playoffs where one of our teams had to go to a playoff game without a lot of their starters. And I think a lot of our teams in our district learn from that, and especially the team that it happened to, you know, learn from it as well. We're a lot more prepared this year, obviously. We went through some trial and error last year, but we're really uh, on top of things. And some students in our area already missing out. Hondo ISD canceled its football games this week after 19 students and staff tested positive. Sam Houston and SAISD reported eight cases last week and called off their games this week. Some districts are live streaming the game so students and parents can stay connected. 507, about 79 degrees. And ready to pair your iPhone and Apple Watch to the Apple Car. We're going to get an update on the production of the company's electric vehicle. Next, special look inside the newly renovated TransGuide offices, courtesy of your traffic authority, Stephen Cavazos. And taking a look outside with live cam, a calm 79 degrees for now, but we've been hitting the 90s and we'll possibly maybe see the triple digits this weekend. We'll be right back. In this segment of Ask Your Traffic, uh, Traffic Authority, uh, their eyes are on the road at all times, but who are the people behind the cameras? Stephen Cavazos is live in the traffic lab. And Stephen, we understand that you visited your friends at the TransGuide offices earlier this week. So what did you find out? Yeah, we talk about them all the time each morning, and these shots right behind me give our viewers just a few glimpses of what's happening out there this morning. But there are over 200 camera shots that are currently monitoring our major highways like 410, I-10, or 281. Just take a look inside. I stopped by the newly renovated TransGuide offices over in the 3500 block of Northwest Loop 410 the, earlier this week. Under this one roof, there are TxDOT operators, Hero Dispatch, Via Dispatch for Buses, City of San Antonio Traffic Signal Operations, and the City of San Antonio Police Towing dispatch and just some of the things they look out for include crashes, stalls, debris on the road and construction. Now John Giannotti is the operations manager and he tells me once an incident is detected, they are then able to post on their digital message sign, which you may spot driving down some of those major highways. We can tell them crash up ahead, left lanes closed, right lanes closed, this exits closed, all kinds of messages that we can relay to the public so they know what's coming up in front of them if there is an incident that they need that they need to be aware of. 
Now, Transguide has been keeping a watchful eye on the road since 1995, and since then, technology has evolved. Their new video wall, as you're just seeing there, is 65 feet wide and 9 feet tall. And they actually blew up uh, the GMSA at 9 the other day to show us how big it is. I don't think I've ever seen Justin that tall. So <laughs> I was hoping I'd make it on the wall, but coming up at GMSA at 6, I'll introduce you to one text on camera operator. She shares her journey with us and why this is no 9 to 5 job, guys. Fascinating. I had no idea that towing dispatch and uh, Debris removal, we're all kind of under that same roof, but yeah. it makes sense. It really does, and we're going to have a lot more to break down. It's a really interesting story. Glad we got to meet cool. our friends. Thank you so much, Steve, and we look forward to it. Right now it's 512, about 79 degrees. And still ahead, a warning about a new malicious lightning cable that can steal user data. Plus, the newest version of the popular NBA video game is now using real announcers. All the time in the world. Just to say, but today, for women living with HR positive HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer, more time is possible with Fresenio, proven to help you live significantly longer when taken with Fulvestrin. Fresenio plus Fulvestrin is for HR positive HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer that has progressed after hormone therapy. Diarrhea is common, may be severe, or cause dehydration or infection. At the first sign, call your doctor, start an antidiarrheal, and drink fluids. Before taking Fresenio, tell your doctor about any fever, chills, or other signs of infection. Fresenio may cause low white blood cell counts, which may cause serious infection that can lead to death. Life-threatening lung inflammation can occur. Tell your doctor about any new or worsening trouble breathing, call for chest pain. Serious liver problems can happen. Symptoms include fatigue, appetite loss, stomach pain, and bleeding or bruising. Blood clots that can lead to death have occurred. Tell your doctor if you have pain or swelling in your arms or legs, shortness of breath, chest pain, and rapid breathing or heart rate, or if you are nursing, pregnant, or plan to be. More time is possible. Ask your doctor about Presenio. Well, it's been a top secret project for a very long time, and Apple's reportedly getting closer to production of an electric car. ABC's Andrew Dimmert has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, are Apple cars on the way? Apple executives are reportedly in talks with Toyota about possible production of its own car brand to come out in 2024. The company once apparently considered autonomous vehicles, but now word is Apple wants to create cars for consumers. Now, a dangerous new tool for hackers. The new and upgraded version of an OMG cable, which resembles a standard lightning cable, allows hackers to steal a user's information. Experts are warning that it can swipe passwords or any Anything a user types. Finally, some audio reality in the new NBA 2K game. The game will feature the real life public address announcers from the arenas of all 30 teams. They're doing introductions and other game highlights like three pointers. The game tips off next Friday. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. All right, I got to get it now just to watch the Spurs game and see the announcers, you know, from AT&T Center. No, that looks pretty neat. I like that. We'll have to check it out. Time now is 517. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. All right, let's go ahead and get to traffic. Things are looking pretty good right now. It's 1604 at Babcock. We did have a few issues out there earlier this morning, so let's go ahead and take a look and see how things are shaping up around town right now. 281 at Hildebrand, pretty quiet there. Just a few vehicles out getting their morning started early. Uh, we haven't spotted any issues uh, for the last few minutes, thankfully. We did have uh, quite the busy start with a few crashes that were being reported, but uh, we do have this crash that just came in from Kula at Culebra Avenue at San Marco Street. Now not causing any issues right now. We're not seeing any yellow or orange or red indicating those slowdowns, but as always use caution to slow down or move over for those first responders. Uh, but jumping all the way over here, we are seeing some improvements out there of I-10 eastbound for because there is some construction going on at FM 15 to 16 to Y Cold Road. It's been going on since nine in the evening to five in the morning. Uh, hopefully they are wrapping up. We've been talking about this throughout the week here on GMSA. Traffic is still slowing down there, so just be prepared or maybe find an alternative route if you haven't gotten out the door this morning. Uh, but taking a wider look at the map, things are still pretty green on the screen. And as we've been talking about people traveling for the upcoming long Labor Day weekend, just some gas prices to keep in mind. AAA now reporting that the average gas price in Bear County is 270 around the state. We're looking at 282 and take a look right here at the national average. It's 318. That's three cents more as of Monday. Uh, the AAA does report that is due to Hurricane Ida and the demand for Labor Day uh, gasoline that people are going to be heading to the pump. So just something to be aware of if you plan on traveling uh, for this this weekend, but right now here in town, the roads are shaping up to be pretty nice so far. TGIF, we're hoping it stays a good Friday, guys. And your Bear County average is right on target. I filled up for 271 a gallon right. yesterday. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. I, but you know, it took me. Uh, yeah, that is the one thing I need to get better at: fueling up before coming into work. It's it's terrible fueling up before coming into the station. 
Just trying to find one. You're like, I don't want to be stranded on the road. Yeah, especially yeah. that early. That early, yeah. not fun. Yeah. fun. Yeah. I try to do the day before. Day before. Yeah, because I'm always <laughs> kind of rushing in the morning. Well, uh, it's Friday football day, so yeah. we're doing a day of uh, football forecast. Yeah, you know, I watched some football yesterday, which was awesome, by the way. It's it's really weird to see all the, the uh, fans in the stands. College football, I know high schools uh, already had a few games, but uh, it, it is back in temperatures. Toasty. Stay cool. That field goal is always good. Uh, heat index is going to be 100 plus. Stray storm today. We had a couple yesterday. Didn't really interrupt the games though. Kickoff 92. Halftime 89. It's another hot one. You know that. Airport delays across the country. Not seeing a whole lot. We mentioned this earlier. If you are doing some traveling, it looks pretty good. There is some rain around Kansas City. Um, potentially moving over towards Chicago, but we're not detecting any delays. So if you are headed to the airport this morning, Looks good. Radar shows a couple showers around our area, uh, mainly uh, out there in DeWitt County, seeing a couple of uh, showers move north. Maybe a lightning strike or two there, but uh, nothing too much to worry about. That's the only thing we have on the radar right now. The forecast calls for some of those isolated showers and storms, as I mentioned a little bit later today. One or two. I mean, this is not going to be much, and it's generally going to be east of I-35, just like yesterday. We're basically on repeat here. Outside, mostly cloudy, 79. East southeasterly winds at about three. The feels like temperature is 83. And the number 79 Hondo, 76 in Divine, 78 Canyon Lake. There are some 80s out there. Del Rio, 84. You were in the triple digits yesterday. Uh, and it is not uh, cooling off much this morning. We'll be right there again today. This is borderline advisory. And yes, there may not be a heat advisory in place, but this is still the kind of heat you got to be careful with. It'll feel like 106 in New Braunfels, 104 in Hondo, 105 in San Antonio. Boy, find some shade today. Hey, if there's any redeeming factor this weekend, and we've been talking about this most of the week, is that the dew points come down a little bit during the afternoon. So the air will be slightly drier Saturday, Sunday. We're trying to find some positive here through all this heat. Uh, it does cool down a little bit next week, too, with some rain chances. A few glitches with the satellite there. Ignore that. But uh, this is the tropics that we're looking at. And uh, not much out in the open Atlantic other than Hurricane Larry, which is going to be a major hurricane. This is going to be a big one, but it's out over open water. So it's just affecting uh, ship channels, basically. Uh, Wednesday, uh, winds will be at 125 miles per hour. As you uh, look at the probability of development behind that, there are some uh, chances there, a 20% chance uh, with this one, and it's just behind Larry. We'll see if it develops its way out there. And then the other area that we've got to watch here working into the Gulf of Mexico, just a 20% chance. And looking at some of the long range models, this thing's going to have a hard time. But anything that makes it into the Gulf of Mexico this time of year, we have to watch. We are reaching the peak of hurricane season, by the way. And if we do get another named storm, it'll be Mindy, followed by Nicholas, Odette, Peter, Rose, Sam, Teresa, Victor, Wanda. Hopefully we don't get all the way to Wanda this year. We're a little behind, behind last year, which is actually a good thing. Uh, a little bit less in the way of storms. Uh, forecast, 20% chance today. Lower humidity this weekend, as we talked about. But look at those numbers. 99 both days. 98 Monday for Labor Day. 20 to 30 percent chance, I'd say late Monday into Tuesday. That's kind of the time frame we'll watch for another uh, chance for some rain around here, guys. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Good advice. And I know a lot of people will be outside, find the pool, yes. find some shade and hydrate. Well, at least early in the morning and late in the evening, it'll be OK. Sure. <laughs> there is that. Yeah. There's that too. Yeah. Thanks, Justin. Mm -hmm. 523, about 79 degrees. And up next in your morning spotlight, Dwayne Johnson, Ryan Reynolds, and Gal Gadot team up in a new film, plus details on new music from ABBA. See if I can keep track of this. Today in entertainment news, three major movie stars in one film and two musical blasts from the past. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. Looking for something specific or just browsing? You're under arrest. Oh my God, read the room. Gal Gadot, Dwayne Johnson, and Ryan Reynolds glam up and duke it out in the first teaser trailer for Red Notice, about an FBI agent, an art thief, and a con artist. The big budget action flick arrives November 12th on Netflix. <laughs> Near 
nearly half a century. Bob Marley and the Wailers, the Capitol Session 73, was recorded behind closed doors, then lost for decades, rediscovered, restored, and remastered. Now this never-before-seen concert by the reggae legends is coming out on DVD, CD, LP, and digital formats on September 3rd. from ABBA. After a nearly 40-year break, the Swedish pop group has reunited for a new album, Voyage, due out November 5th. If it seems they haven't aged, that's because the 70-something quartet spent months doing motion capture. So Industrial Light and Magic could create a digital stage show, which will open with a live 10-piece band in a specially built London arena next May. Dusting off my old 45s in Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. And when word came out about that yesterday, people were losing their minds that oh, ABBA was coming back. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It is kind of cool. And that's cool that they're using that technology, too. 527, about 79 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, people in the northeast are picking up the pieces now that the remnants of Hurricane Ida are finally moving off. What doctors are recommending for students now that we've hit a record high in child hospitalizations for COVID. And Krispy Kreme unveiling their latest lineup of fall flavored donuts, including pumpkin spice. We're going to tell you about the other flavors that you can only get for a limited time. Experts say we can expect more severe weather in the future here in San Antonio. Head on GMSA at 6, how trees play a vital role in helping us. Making headlines this morning, more deaths being associated with the remnants of Hurricane Ida as parts of the Northeast deal with the aftermath of record rain and flooding. No one had been living in this home for years, but firefighters say they found flames, smoke, and a whole lot more inside. I'm Katrina Weber, I'll tell you more about it. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we are starting Friday at 79 degrees, but we are expecting things to heat up today and definitely this weekend. Thank goodness it is Friday. Good morning, everybody. We've made it to September 3rd. Happy Friday, but get ready for the heat. It's going to be a hot one today and all weekend. If you are sniffling and sneezing, there are a few allergens out there. Here's Justin with more. Hey there, good morning, guys. Uh, pollen count from yesterday, fall elm jumped up. That's kind of what is of note here. It's in the moderate category, 130. It is fall elm season. Fall elm and ragweed tend to kick up this time of year. Mold is low, pigweed, ragweed all well, but that's uh, that's what we're looking at. Could be the reason uh, you have some sniffles. And as we look at the uh, satellite and radar picture here, uh, we do have some morning clouds, but a couple of showers also beginning to show up. Far eastern counties shouldn't be of great consequence this morning, and we're not expecting much here in San Antonio if at all. If we're going to see any rain, probably this afternoon, a couple more pop-up showers and storms. It's it's warm out there, 77 New Braunfels, 79 Canyon Lake, 76 in Bandera, 76 Tarp Lake. A lot of people probably leaving work a little bit early today. We got a three day weekend ahead of us here. 20% chance rain, but uh, we'll be up around 98 degrees by five o'clock. It's one of those situations where if you are going out to your car after work, you're going to want to turn on the AC before you get in because it is going to be sweltering out there today. Heat index will jump up to around 103, 104. And yes, it is Friday. So Stephen, we're all counting on you to give us a good report for the morning commute. No pressure. No, uh, but I will tell you this. I picked the worst weekend to move. This is, is I'm not looking forward to it. I'll have the sunblock and the water handy at all times. I would offer to help, but <laughs> I was trying to guilt trip Justin there, but OK, yeah. that's all right. I'll do it. You know, my little strong arms over here. Uh, but yeah, you know, the roads are shaping up to be pretty nice here in town as we're getting this Friday morning started. Let's go ahead and take a closer look, see what's happening right now. 35 at Evans, uh, just a few people getting their morning started early with us. Uh, thankfully, no big issues to report at this hour. We started off with a little bit of bumps in the road there, but thankfully things have since cleared out. But we still have this crash here of Culebra Avenue at San Marco Street, not causing any issues, though. I uh, haven't spotted that on the TxDOT website, our, our system that is detected that. So uh, we'll be watching that closely. But right now the roads are still pretty green there. Uh, we do also want to bring your attention right there to this slowdown that we spotted off I-10 eastbound at FM 1516. As you mentioned, there is construction that should be wrapping up out there uh, right towards Weichold Road. So just be prepared. Uh, that's been going on 
since uh, nine this evening, nine last night that is, uh, should be wrapping up hopefully pretty soon before we get a little bit busier with that morning rush hour. And as we zoom out on the map, uh, yeah, things are pretty good right now. So think it's a good time to head out the door, grab that cup of coffee, get your day started early. Inbound time's also looking really good. Pleasant drive from Pleasanton right now, 27 minutes on 37, 17 on 35. And if you're coming in from Highway 90 in Casterville, we just got 18 minutes at this hour. And one last look at Trans Guide Loop 410 at San Pedro, getting a little bit busier in some of these shots. But as always, we're watching the roads closely and keep your eyes on the road as well. Good advice. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, arson investigators have a lot of questions regarding a fire in a Northside home. They're trying to figure out what caused it. That home was supposed to be vacant. Katrina Weber is on Don Ridge Drive near Jackson Keller with a live report. And Katrina, are they calling this suspicious? Well, no one has used that specific word just yet, but firefighters gave the impression that something out of the ordinary may have caused this fire. They say there was talk about a car that was seen speeding away from this area. Now, the fire did cause heavy damage to this home, which was supposed to be empty. When firefighters got here around 9 o'clock last night, they say that the house wasn't empty at all. There were flames and smoke, as well as a whole lot of furniture and other items inside. They believe that was left behind by whomever lived here last. The firefighters say all the contents of the home made it tough for them to move around when they were fighting the fire. Ultimately, they were able to put it out. They searched the home and did not find anyone inside. The firefighters say that neighbors told them no one had lived here for about seven years, so they did find it unusual that there would be a fire here. And again, that is why arson investigators are trying to get to the bottom of whatever happened. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. This morning, the death toll continues to rise in Ida's aftermath. As CNN's Mandy Gaither reports, at least 46 people have died in the northeast in the wake of the storm, and the danger is not over yet. Across the northeast, Ida's record rainfall has ended, but the devastation continues. The emotions here. I, I can speak for everyone. There is only sadness and it's, it's just overwhelming. From New York to New Jersey and beyond, dozens of people have died in the wake of historic flooding. To wake up and know that we lost some of our fellow citizens simply because they weren't able to get out of their car, they weren't able to get out of their homes. In New York City, storm floods overpowered the subway system. More than 800 passengers were rescued. Governor Kathy Hochul now looking into the response to the storm. Once we get our FEMA assessment done, I'm going to be demanding answers. I want to know who knew what, when, and what could have been done differently. In New Jersey, a submerged train and a stadium underwater. Governor Phil Murphy says an estimated 8 to 10 inches of rain fell in the central part of the state in mere hours, noting it was more than a month's worth of rain at one time. It's never flooded like this. It's never rained like this. So this is by any measure historic. And it's not over yet. Millions remain under flood warnings as all that rain flows into larger bodies of water. Some rivers in the northeast are forecast to remain above flood stage into the weekend. I'm Mandy Gaither reporting. New overnight in New Zealand, authorities say they shot and killed a violent extremist today when he entered a supermarket and stabbed six shoppers. The country's prime minister described the incident as a terrorist attack. They say the man was a Sri Lankan national who was inspired by ISIS. She said he was, said he was well known to the nation's security agencies and was being monitored around the clock. The prime minister says that by law, the man was not allowed to be kept in prison. Authorities say three of the people who were stabbed were seriously hurt. Wall Street is celebrating after two major indices finished at all-time highs. The S&P 500 and the Nasdaq Composite both finished in record territory yesterday. The Dow also finished higher. Meanwhile, a stretch of robust hiring over the past several months may have slowed in August. Analysts have forecasted that employers added 750,000 jobs last month. That would represent a substantial gain, though it's below the roughly 940,000 that were added in both June and July. Elvis Presley's iconic studded jumpsuit and cape are going up for auction. Cruz GWS Auction says he wore them during four Madison Square Garden performances in 1972. Minimum bid for the jumpsuit, $375,000. For the cape, the minimum bid, $50,000. You know what? 
Somebody's going to buy both of them. I'm sure. Well, mm -hmm. you need them both together. <laughs> right. It's a, it's a set. <laughs> I, yeah, you have to. Time now is 539 and about 78 degrees. Still ahead from pumpkin spice to maple glaze, we'll tell you what you can indulge on at Krispy Kreme as part of their new fall-inspired donut menu. And next, doctors say that we are seeing a record high in COVID-19 cases among school-aged children. What doctors recommend for students who are already back in class. And outside with live cam headed into the long holiday weekend. Maybe some of you are off uh, after today through Monday. Keep it here on GMSA. We have a full holiday forecast coming up. This morning, there's a new record high for child COVID-19 hospitalizations. As a result, some districts are closing schools, falling deaths and a spike in cases. CNN's Emily Schmidt has a closer look at the concerning numbers. Growing concerns about rising COVID-19 cases among children who are being hospitalized at the highest rate in more than a year. New CDC data showing just how seriously the Delta variant can hit people who are unvaccinated. Most either are unvaccinated or under the age of 12 and unable to get vaccinated. Uh, the numbers have been three or four times what we were seeing last winter at its peak. The CDC says between August 20th and 26th, an average of 330 children were admitted to hospitals every day with COVID-19. Yeah, I have a mission for them to get two or three other people vaccinated and for the kids who are in high school to get some of their classmates vaccinated. It comes as COVID-19 concerns for some schools in Florida and Texas to go virtual again. In Texas, a school district closing schools after two teachers died of COVID-19 in the same week. In Northwest Florida, school districts in two counties also shutting down until after Labor Day, either due to a spike in COVID cases or quarantine related staffing shortages or both. Neither district mandates masks for students or staff. Meanwhile, FDA advisors will meet September 17th to discuss Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine boosters. That's just three days before the White House target date. They are preparing for the likelihood that we will be giving boosters to individuals and logistically we'll be starting it on the week of September the 20th. For today's Health Minute, I'm Emily Schmidt. 543, about 78 degrees. Coming up next, new wedding ring sales show that a lot of people are looking to get married soon. What that means for ring prices. And welcome back. It's 546. In your morning consumer headlines, it appears a lot of people are ready to tie the knot despite the COVID pandemic. Signet, the parent company for Jared and Kay Jewelers, says millennials are flocking to the two mall-based jewelry chains for engagement rings. Shares of Signet soared to a new 52-week high Thursday after the company posted earnings that blew away forecasts. Signet's bridal category sales increased by 25% compared to the same quarter two years ago. Overall sales more than doubled from a year ago and rose more than 30% from the pre-pandemic levels back in 2019. Wow, it's huge. Uh, the flavors of fall are coming earlier this year, just as Starbucks brought back their pumpkin spice latte. Krispy Kreme will soon be offering a selection of pumpkin spice donuts. Starting Monday, Krispy Kreme will be selling an array of pumpkin spice donuts, including original glaze. Then there's the even more decadent option of the original glazed pumpkin spice filled with cheesecake. Whoa. And last but not least, an old-fashioned pumpkin spice cake donut. Special pumpkin spice varieties only available for next week and be followed by another classic fall favorite, favorite uh, apple cider and then maple glaze. Yes, yes, and yes. Wow, but how many calories in that cheesecake one? I'm ready to buy a new suit if I have to. <laughs> <laughs> we might all have to. Let's go ahead and take a look at traffic with Stephen Cavazos. You know what I tell myself? It's fluff season. Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> it's fluff season. Why not? Why not? And you know, one of these days I'm going to bob for apples if it gets any cooler. Uh, Loop 1604 at Babcock. I'll get to the roads right now. Uh, let's take a look right now. Things are shaping up to be pretty nice here from these shots that we're seeing right now on the rotator. Loop 410 at Jackson Keller. Pretty quiet there. Still pretty quiet there at 281 at Hildebrand. Not a lot of people out there at this hour, but we know as we're inching closer to 6 a.m. 
p.m. That's when it starts to get a little bit busier. So let's go ahead and take a look right now at our maps. Uh, we do have a stalled vehicle reported here off I-10 eastbound at MLK Drive, not causing any issues at this hour. Thankfully, uh, these stalls that we've been seeing haven't been staying on our maps for a long period of time. They've been clearing out rather quickly, but uh, be sure to check those vehicles before you hit the roadways because we are seeing them around town here and there. But right now, a lot of those issues that we did spot a little bit earlier have now cleared up. We did have those crashes around 430 at 1604 and State Highway 151 that are now out of the uh, out of the way there. And we did have that slowdown off of I-10 East uh, where there was some construction going on, but looks pretty green there if you plan on traveling to Seguin. Uh, so no issues right now on the roadways, just those stalled vehicles. Check them, check them before you hit the roadways. We know a lot of people are going to be traveling for this holiday weekend. I-10 at Program. One last look there. Just a few folks out there on the roadway. Maybe going to go grab that PSL a product to something or one or the other. <laughs> yeah, so we can pretend it's fall. Yeah. Yeah, with, with at least the food. It's all about pretending at mm -hmm. this point. All right, so we haven't seen tons of rain lately, yeah. and uh, Justin's got an update on our drought monitor from the yep. week. Uh, it is uh, fluff season, which makes me feel better about myself, but also <laughs> uh, it is that season where we have to watch out for the uh, drought situation. Not an issue here in Texas so much, but as you get out west, we, we know it's been a really, really rough summer. Uh, there are still issues with wildfires and still extreme drought as you get into California and parts of Nevada and you get up into Oregon. Uh, there has been some improvement across parts of Arizona with the monsoon rains this season uh, and here in Texas. Boy, things are looking good. I mean, there is one little area here in the Big Bend where there's still technically a drought. But I would I'd say uh, Texas has been in pretty good shape. Uh, we're 1%. Uh, 1% of the state is in drought. Uh, three months ago, it was 19%. So there has been a lot of improvement. And checking in on Medina Lake, still coming down. Uh, obviously, it's still being used for irrigation. But 32% full, uh, it is down 2.2 since last month, despite some of that rain that we've seen. Highs yesterday, 99 here in San Antonio, 102 in Del Rio. We've had our hottest stretch of the year right here in early September, and today will be no different thanks to our ridge pipe pressure, which is sitting over parts of North Texas. Now, we are on the edge of it, and there is a little disturbance that will roll through this afternoon. That could be enough to kick off some isolated showers and storms. But like yesterday, Anything we see is few and far between, and they uh, typically don't last all that long. We are actually seeing a couple showers uh, this morning uh, east of San Antonio, around the Quero area, one little shower, and then some activity along the coast. Nothing that is very heavy. A little closer look at that shower uh, near Quero. It's falling apart as it moves north into parts of uh, Lavaca County there. Forecast calls for uh, stray storm or two. This computer model shows uh, maybe a stray storm east of I-35 this afternoon. This is around 5 o'clock. And as we get into tomorrow, with lower moisture levels in the atmosphere, I think our rain chance is pretty much shut off. Outside right now, mostly cloudy skies. 79 at the airport, still holding on to some low 80s there at Stinson. And a little more comfortable as you get over towards Randolph. 75 in calm winds. 74 in Kerrville, 78 Pleasanton, 77 in New Braunfels. You're at 81 down there in Catula and 78 in Gonzales. Two points are in the 70s, so that uh, is still a problem today. And heat index values are going to be above 100 just about anywhere you go. So another day where you got to be careful. Very quickly, the long-term forecast here, high pressure wobbles around, falls apart a little bit, and that opens the door for maybe a few more showers and storms on Labor Day. This is Labor Day, 5 o'clock. By Tuesday, still a couple of showers as well, but then high pressure tries to build back in by the middle part of next week. So here's how it looks on the seven day forecast. 20% chance rain today, lower humidity this weekend, 20% chance Monday, 30% chance Tuesday, and the numbers stay above average all the way into next week. Mm. Nice and hot. <laughs> yeah, it's not, uh, it's not PSL season. Mm. No, it's Yet. not. We can, as a matter of fact, if you guys want to table this conversation for a whole month, we can. I'm okay with that. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks, yeah. guys. Right now, we are at 552, still about 79 degrees or so. And players of the Pokemon Go mobile app received some good news from the game's creator this week. They're going to have a look at the changes next. Coming up here on GMA, we are talking all about the remnants, and I mean what's left behind of Ida, because Ida itself is gone, but see behind me that double yellow. This was a road here in Demarest, New Jersey, collapsed and now just a hole. So we're gonna be cleaning up, but also planning for the future and talking about what happens 
When a basement floods, how do you protect your things before and how do you save them after? We're going to get into that. And then, of course, in Louisiana, there are still nearly a million customers without power. President Biden going down there. And from experience, I can tell you it got desperate days ago. I'm sure without all of the necessities, it is going to feel even worse with so many folks still in the dark. We'll have that and so much more coming up right here on GMA. When COVID-19 lockdowns began in 2020, Pokemon Go developer Niantic made temporary changes to make the game more playable in the age of social distancing. But when the changes were rolled back this summer, player response was critical. In something of a rarity in the video game world, Niantic pivoted and listened to its community. We have listened to players and heard their feedback around two main things, right? One, uh, that they've really enjoyed the increased interaction radius for Pokestops and gyms in Pokemon Go. Uh, so we've decided to keep that you know, increased distance uh, instead of going to the original distance that uh, we've had for years. And the second is we've heard a lot of feedback from our players around our communication. Um, and wanting more of that. So we've made a number of commitments on the communication front. Which includes regular releases of information from the developer and ongoing conversations with the game's community leaders. We do think it's very valuable to listen to our players and, and make sure that what we're developing is the type of game that not only serves our, our mission of exploration, uh, exercise, and real world social, but is something that players really enjoy to play. Leveling up in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Ahead in the next hour, GMSA, if you're in the market for a new vehicle, you may have to spend a little more than you want. We'll explain. Also have the latest on the fallout from the Supreme Court's decision to uphold Texas's new abortion law. Trans guide right now. We are on the lookout for any flares or flashing lights, anything unusual right now. Not seeing it on any of these trans guide cameras, but Stephen will get you up to speed on your morning commute as we approach the top of the hour. We'll be right back. This morning, the death toll rises in the northeast following the wrath of Hurricane Ida. We're going to have the very latest. San Antonio firefighters are calling a north side house fire suspicious. We'll tell you what investigators are saying. And taking a look outside with live cam this Friday morning, we're at 79 degrees and we are expecting a hot Labor Day weekend. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. Congratulations, everybody. You made it to Friday. It is September 3rd. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. Uh, see the good news and the bad news. We'll see. The good news is that there will not be rain this weekend, but that can also be bad news, too, the, because that means it won't cool off. Yeah, it, it is. Yeah, so the bad news, <laughs> there's no rain this weekend. Right. So the extreme heat is here for the long haul, and it pretty much lasts throughout the entire uh, Labor Day weekend. Pretty much. I, you know, it's funny. We, we did so well this summer that we hit September. You would think we'd start transitioning to fall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not, no, not at all. Uh, Friday night football is going to be another toasty one. Uh, we think the temperatures will be in the 90s. Kick or field goal there. And uh, we'll have temperatures uh, probably starting off in the low 90s for kickoff 89 by halftime. There is a chance for a stray storm. We saw it yesterday on the radar, but it shouldn't interrupt any of the games. Uh, we're not looking for much. On the radar this morning, we've got a couple of showers here and there along the coast. Nothing here around San Antonio other than a few clouds. Here are the headlines. Here we go again. What a white snake reference there. Uh, we'll see a hot weekend uh, again. Couple of storms on the radar today. Travel decent travel conditions today, tomorrow and Sunday. So if you have plans to head out for a Labor Day weekend, all is well. The weekend will we hit 100? That's the other big question. That arbitrary number, but it's possible we uh, end our streak of no 100 degree days here in 2021. Rain chances today at 20%. We top out at 98 southeast chilly winds, 5 to 15 miles per hour. Our Friday morning commuter started off a little bit rocky, but I think things are getting better. Stephen, am I wrong about that? No, you are right. We are not seeing any issues after this morning. Justin, 35 and seniors. Just a few on, little people out there. I think my mic's off one second there. Okay, I may have to turn off my mic, guys. Sorry about that. I-10 at ProBands. Can you guys hear me now? We're good. All right. All right. We're in business, I hope. 
35 at Evans. What we were saying is that the commute is pretty smooth right now. As you can take a look from these shots of Transguide, Justin is right. We did have a few issues out there this morning. Thankfully, those have since resolved. Let's take a closer look right now and take a look how things are shaping up. 37 at Hackberry, 16 to 4 at Babcock. It is pretty quiet at this hour. Uh, thankfully, those issues that we did see have since resolved. And as we bring you over here to the map, though, we still have this stalled vehicle off I-10 eastbound at MLK Drive, not causing any issues. But as always, a reminder, check those vehicles before you hit the roadways. The the wider view at the map does show that uh, everything is pretty green on the screen, which is of course what we like to see. And if you're going to be traveling to San Antonio here in the next few moments, let's check out those inbound times for you. Uh, everything's still pretty good right now. Coming in from I-10 and Bernie, 24 minutes, 26 minutes on 281 and Bolverde, and we're just looking at 26 minutes on 35 and New Braunfels. So nothing big to worry about this morning, but we know a lot more people are going to be traveling uh, for that Labor Day weekend. We have more gas prices to be on the lookout for and construction. You're going to want to mark your calendars. That's coming up later this morning morning on GMSA. Mark Stephanie. New this morning, fire crew is trying to figure out what sparked a north side fire last night. It happened at a house in the 300 block of Don Ridge, south of Jackson Keller. A battalion chief says the home was vacant, but there was tons of stuff that had been left behind inside the house. He also says a vehicle was seen leaving the area, so investigators think this fire may have been set on purpose. Crews were able to put it out pretty quickly and no one was hurt. Also new this morning, a man facing charges after sparking a fire with a Molotov cocktail. This is 23-year-old Tyler John Bennett. Now, according to an arrest affidavit, it happened last month when Bennett threw that Molotov cocktail through the bathroom window of a group home. The next day, he is caught on surveillance video lighting a fire on Rudiman Road at the building where his ex-girlfriend works. Bennett was finally arrested the following day when he went back to the group home and started breaking windows. Now he is facing arson charges. The dry out cleanup process along the Northeast is continuing following epic rainfall from what was left of Hurricane Ida. The death toll from the storm and its flooding is up to at least 46 people. Here's ABC's Faith Abube with more. This morning, new stories of heroism and tragedy in the wake of that devastating flood disaster across the Northeast. In Connecticut, a state trooper is among the people who did not survive. He's one of the senior sergeants on the state police, well respected, and um, it's just a tragedy. Sergeant Brian Mull was checking on conditions in Woodbury, where three rivers come together when floodwaters swept his patrol car away. In New York City, at least 13 people died when water filled homes and overwhelmed streets and the local transit system. The NYPD saying 835 subway passengers had to be rescued and nearly 500 vehicles across the city abandoned. In New Jersey, the death toll rising to 23. In Philadelphia, hundreds of calls for water rescues after the Schuylkill River spilled into communities. The water as high as this overpass flooding an expressway that runs through the heart of the city. Officials say a pump designed to clear the road failed. Here's what the expressway normally looks like. At a nearby apartment complex, the National Guard rescuing nearly a dozen people and their pets. We really appreciate it. You know, you don't really expect these types of things to happen when, you know, you're in a big building like this. In the meantime, experts following the science are attributing the frequency of extreme rainfall events to human-caused climate change. Forecasters warned about Wednesday night storms for days. The National Weather Service in New York City issued a flash flood watch back on Monday. But the intense rainfall proving to be too much for the local infrastructure. But in reality, what was once the 100 year flood, the flood that had about a 1% chance of happening in any given year, isn't the 100 year flood anymore. In New York, Faith Abube, ABC News. The South was also hit very hard by Hurricane Ida. President Biden is set to visit Louisiana today to survey the damage. She plans on meeting with state and local leaders from impacted communities. Also tour a neighborhood and get an aerial view of those hard hit communities. After the tours, the president will deliver remarks on his administration's response to Ida. And Quesa Community is partnering with the Red Cross to help collect donations for those impacted by Ida. The Hurricane Ida phone bank is happening today right here on Quesa from noon to 7 p.m. All you have to do is call to donate. We will provide that number for you later today. For more ways to help out, you can head to QuesaCommunity.com. 
Well, their eyes are watching you as you drive. We're talking about TransGuide. Hundreds of cameras monitor our major highways every single day. And this week, your traffic authority, Stephen Cavazos, met the people on the other side of the lens, and he joins us once again from the traffic lab. Stephen, what is their job all about? Well, we were really excited. We got a chance to go ahead and stop by and we can tell you it's no nine to five. In fact, it's a job that's 24 seven. And right now these shots behind me are being controlled by our friends at TransGuide. So why is their job important? Well, let's go ahead and break it down. Now they are the eyes of the road and just some of the things they look for include those crashes, stalls, debris on the road and the construction we like to talk about. And their job is to alert drivers. Once an incident is detected, TransGuide is then able to post on their digital message signs, which you may spot driving down some of those major highways like 1604 or 281. Now under this one roof, there are text dot operators, hero dispatch via dispatch for buses, city of San Antonio traffic signal operations and the city of San Antonio police towing dispatch. Now TransGuide is instrumental here in the traffic lab each day. They inform us about what's happening out there and here at KSAT. We work to give you the latest before your morning commute. We met Gio Garza who works at TransGuide and she's a helpful resource for me personally uh, when I talk to her every morning and she tells me what a typical morning it looks like between let's just say two and four sometimes uh, we get the wrong way drivers so that's pretty much what the morning consists of and then after that we get the little calm before the storm of the morning rush <laughs> Yeah, no surprise there. Now, TransGuide did undergo a big renovation, which includes new floors, workstations, and of course, that new video wall, which is 65 feet tall and nine feet wide, apart 65 feet wide and nine feet tall. Now, that does provide a clear and crisp quality for those shots, as you're seeing right behind me. And so they get a clearer picture than what we're looking at right behind us. So be sure to tune in later today at noon when we take a deeper look at the transformation of TransGuide. Guys? Uh, they make our job, particularly your job, a little bit easier, don't they? Yes, big, very helpful. Yes, they do. <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. Right now, time check 609, about 78 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, Apple has been rumored to be getting into the car business, and discussions are intensifying. We're going to tell you all those details. And we'll tell you why one of the country's biggest automakers is putting a pause on production and what that means for people trying to buy or sell a car. Taking a look outside with live cam, we're starting out Friday at 78 degrees. It's Friday. Get out there early. <laughs> we'll be right back. Welcome back at 613. Some big news if you're buying or selling a car. General Motors is the latest company to announce a pause in production. And that means car prices are about to rise again. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has more. This morning, assembly lines at General Motors temporarily coming to a halt. Production at eight major plants put on pause, including two plants that produce the company's best-selling vehicle, the Silverado pickup. It's all because of a worsening shortage of computer semiconductor chips used in a variety of car parts. Now we've got the chips that are shorting what's being put out. We're talking about vehicles having like a thousand chips. GM, not the only one. Ford, Toyota, and Nissan also pumping the brakes on production. The computer chips are mostly made in Asia, where right now the Delta variant of the coronavirus is hitting hard, forcing plant closures. The domino effect quickly extending to the big three in Detroit. We're going to have this start-stop situation where it's like the lines come back on, they get shuttered back again. Some automakers, they're reworking their vehicles to have fewer chips. Certain options aren't even being offered, but it's not been enough to actually, you know, completely curb all of the issues. How does this impact you? With less supply comes increased demand, sending car prices skyrocketing. The average price of a new car last month was an eye-popping $42,832, and supplies are only tightening. Car dealerships had just under 1 million new vehicles on their lots during August. That's 72% fewer than during the same month in 2019 before the pandemic. The bright spot? If you're looking to sell a car, now is the time. With so few new cars available, people looking for new wheels are paying a premium for pre-owned, with prices up 29% from a year ago. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. 
It's a rumor that's been circulating for years. Apple executives are reportedly in talks with Toyota about possible production of its own car brand. The long rumored Apple car could come out as soon as 2024. Now Toyota isn't the first automaker Apple has reportedly approached. Earlier this year, Apple was believed to be taking preliminary steps for car production with South Korean car maker Hyundai. And while we're talking cars for one second, read an interesting article this week. If you are leasing your vehicle and you're near the end of your term, they're highly recommending you go ahead and buy your vehicle and then sell it. They said you're going to make a fortune in most instances. And there are some uh, lease companies who are actually contacting those uh, leasers like, hey, we, we will buy ah, your vehicle. There you vehicle. go. Yeah. yeah Everybody's playing that shell game. 616 right now. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos this Friday morning. Good morning. Yeah, it's getting a little bit busier now that we are inching a little bit closer to 7 a.m. 37 at Pecan Valley shows that the traffic's picking up there and 37 at Hackberry off to a smooth start from these shots at Transguide. But that doesn't mean that we are seeing just calm roads right now. There is some uh, issues to be aware of right now. Let's bring your attention to the map. Uh, we have an incident reported here off US 90 eastbound at 36. Our system has picked this up as a stalled vehicle. However, TxDOT is reporting that there is a crash out there. We're going to see if we can get you a clearer picture, find out what's going on. But I Either way, do use caution if you're going to be traveling into San Antonio on these eastbound lanes of Highway 90. Again, an incident is being reported out there right at 36th Street. Let's jump over here to the wider view of the map as we've been talking about. It's been pretty green, although we still have this stall that was out there. Looks like it has since cleared out. Uh, but as we mentioned, gas prices, though, we know a lot of folks are going to be getting to the gas station probably a little bit earlier before their morning drive if they're going to be traveling for the long Labor Day weekend. AAA gas prices, they are reporting the average gas price in Bear County is 270. I know Mark said that is right on. On, uh, hitting the nail on the head there and here around the state we're looking at 282. The national average right now is 318. That's up almost 3.5 cents following Hurricane Ida and AAA does report that they anticipate that the, the demand that is is going to go up because of the Labor Day weekend. So something to be aware of there for the national average gas price. But as we take one last look here at Transguide and here at home, things are shaping up to be pretty nice. Although we are watching the roads closely again, we're going to find out what's going on over there off US 90 at 36 where that incident is reported guys. Stephen, I paid 271, so I want to go back this oh. morning and get my 15 or 20 cents back. <laughs> Mark should be knocking on the door. Hey, <laughs> just look for me and don't let me in. Uh, Justin is here with our Labor Day weekend forecast. Yeah. And you're going to get your money's worth if you're floating the river this weekend. Oh. Temperatures are shaping up to be hot. It's a good weekend to go floating. Uh, here's a look at the forecast. Uh, we think that uh, we'll be in the upper 90s uh, both days if we can get it to work. Maybe not. You'll have to trust me on this one. We are expecting temperatures right around 100 both days if you're floating the river. Uh, the high pressure that's in control is uh, really driving our forecast here. Uh, we're going to see heat really for the foreseeable future. Now we may get a little bit more cloud cover early next week, which will help a little bit, but not much. A little disturbance that's rolling around the edge of this ridge, and that may give us a slight rain chance today, too. We're already seeing a few showers on the radar down to our south and east. And if you're doing some traveling today, uh, there could be a few thunderstorms in Houston, a few thunderstorms maybe along the coast down there at Port A, but otherwise pretty good travel weather. It's hot, obviously. Uh, Texas is in good shape, though. And, and looking at the radar, there's some of those showers and storms I was talking about. Some showers just along the coast there, and we're seeing a few of those creeping a little bit closer to some of our eastern counties uh, as of this morning quickly falling apart though, and that's going to be the nature of the activity uh, for the first half of the day. By the afternoon, we'll start to see a couple more of those pop ups. We saw a few yesterday that didn't put down a lot of rain, uh, but that'll be the case again this afternoon. Outside right now, mostly cloudy, 78 degrees at the airport, feels like 81, courtesy of a 76 degree dew point, 76 in New Braunfels, 77 Divine, 79 Hondo, and still in the low 80s in Del Rio, which continues to be our hot spot. You look at the uh, heat index numbers today. This is pretty brutal. Gonzales feel like 106 this afternoon, 108 Pleasanton, 105 Carrizo Springs, and that may even be the case here in San Antonio. So use some caution if you're going to be outside. Uh, you know, the only redeeming factor, we mentioned that it's going to be in the upper 90s, close to 100 this weekend. Dew points come down a little bit. So that helps some with regards to the uh, heat index, obviously, but the dew points start to rise a little bit more early next week. Meantime, in the tropics, we do have some systems of note, uh, one being Larry. That's a good looking hurricane there. That's going to head off to the uh, west and northwest. Should stay out, out over open water. 
Another little system behind that, 20% chance of development. Uh, and it's way out there. And then another little area here, uh, just a 20% chance for the next five days as it moves into the Gulf of Mexico. Doesn't look like this is going to do much, but we still need to watch. We're heading towards peak of hurricane season and anything that gets in the Gulf of Mexico, we've got to watch. Uh, here's what our seven day forecast looks like. Uh, 99, as I mentioned, Saturday, Sunday, lower humidity, Labor Day, 20% chance of rain. 30% shot on Tuesday, so that's kind of our window there. If we're going to get some more thunderstorms, uh, I think that's when we'll see them. Uh, and then Wednesday, Thursday of next week starts to heat back up uh, with 98 forecast on Thursday. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Just about 620 and 78 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, some exciting news for NBA 2K fans. We're going to tell you about one of the game's most anticipated features. I don't just play someone brainy on TV. I'm an actual neuroscientist, and I love the science behind Nariva Plus. Unlike ordinary memory supplements, Nariva Plus fuels six key indicators of brain performance. More brain performance, yes please. Nariva, think bigger. Hey, what will you design today? Presentations, poster, social post. Yes, drag and drop, collaborate, customize, Make it your own. And just like that, you can achieve your goals. With Canva, you can. Start designing for free at canva.com. For asthma, there's primatine mist. When symptoms strike, your airways narrow and there's less breathing room. Primatine mist is clinically shown to open airways quickly. Get the number one FDA approved over the counter asthma inhaler and breathe easy again. In this morning's GMA First Look, what to do with the flooded basement? Natural disasters, they often strike with such little warning that we get stunned. It's a home horror show. Roads awash, sewers overflowing, and basements filled with water. Matt Reisinger is a contractor in Texas who worked through the Hurricane Harvey flooding disaster and says recovery can happen with some tools you may already have. And you really want to think about your personal protective equipment. That water can have bacteria in it. He stresses documenting the damage for insurance purposes. Floor, ceiling, walls, everything. Next, throw out what's damaged. But that's not all. Coming up at 7 a.m., we're going to walk you through all the steps to make sure your basement is dry and mold-free. Plus, what you can do to protect your space before the next big storm. With your GMA First Look, I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland, California. And audio reality is a feature in the new NBA 2K. The game will have the real live public address announcers from the arenas of all 30 NBA teams. They're doing introductions and other game highlights like three pointers. NBA 2K 22 tips off next Friday. High school football heating up with another full slate of matchups tonight. We've got you covered over on KSAT.com. Just search big game coverage for a full list of scores, schedules, and highlights. And time now is about 625 and 78 degrees out there. Head on GMSA fallout continues after the Supreme Court's decision to uphold Texas's new abortion law, the latest on the growing legal battle, and what comes next. And the list on a fire investigation on the city's north side and why crews had such a hard time putting out the flames. Katrina Weber is staying on top of this story and will join us live with the details. And then checking Transguide right now, not seeing any activity here at 1604 and Braun, but uh, it appears we've got an incident working right now. Stephen will get you up to date after this. Arson investigators already have a job ahead. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. They are trying to get to the bottom of a fire that happened late last night. I'll tell you more about it. And a scary scene in New Zealand. Authorities there say a violent extremist entered a supermarket and stabbed shoppers at random. The latest just ahead. And outside right now with live cam as we wait for the sun to come up, we've made it to the unofficial end of summer. The long Labor Day weekend is just about here. We just need to get through today's workday. 
forecast coming up. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday the 3rd. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. We hope you had a wonderful week and, you know, if not, look forward to a wonderful weekend. A hot one, though. It's going to be steamy out there. Any chance of rain at all, Justin? Yeah, yeah, there's a slight chance today and Monday and Tuesday. It's just not a good chance. It's not going to cool us down or anything like that. And just because we forecast this heat doesn't mean we like it. Okay, let me okay. preface it with that uh, because temperatures are going to be back in that range today where it's just uncomfortable outside. 99 was the high yesterday. 101 Pleasanton, 99 Creasos brings 102 in Del Rio. So it's a really toasty day. Uh, we're going to see temperatures very similar this afternoon. If you missed the pollen count yesterday, fall elm is in the moderate category. Mold, pigweed, ragweed, all low. Fall elm typically jumps up this time of year. It's fall elm and ragweed season, if you're curious. So those are the two we kind of watch. Uh, we'll see where fall elm lands today. We'll get that pollen count in here in a couple hours. Satellite and radar shows uh, we do have a couple showers right along the coast, stretching from Corpus Christi up towards Victoria. A couple lightning strikes mixed in there, too. But I think any activity we see this morning is going to be well east of San Antonio. Your Labor Day weekend forecast, hot. We take rain chances out Saturday and Sunday, by the way. Mostly sunny, 99 degrees. And then just a 20% uh, chance of some afternoon isolated stuff on Monday. We'll put temperatures at 98. I think we're starting to see a few more issues on the roadways. Traffic's beginning to pick up. Let's check in with Steven now. And the morning commute getting a little tougher, I'm imagining. Yeah, not how exactly how we want to start a Labor Day weekend. Uh, but, you know, the shots of Trans Sky do show that it is getting busier out there. More folks getting their morning started. And as we take a look around town, things don't look bad from these shots at Trans Sky. Uh, but that's not the issue right now. The issue are some of the things that we're seeing on the map. Uh, right now, we do want to talk about this one here off US 90 eastbound at 36th Street. Uh, again, our system has picked this up as a stalled vehicle. But right now, TxDOT is reporting that there is a crash out in that area. So if you are traveling to San Antonio from Castroville, perhaps uh, do be aware that we do have an incident reported out there. So just use caution driving out there. Uh, we want to take you further up here towards 35, just uh, off of 35 there at Loma, Loma Azul near Topper Wine. There is an incident also reported out there. This is not affecting anyone's traffic right now, but we have a crew out there on the scene. Uh, very busy, as we can tell you, uh, we're, we're going to be working to get you a live look out there right now, but uh, we're going to be watching to see how that does impact that drive time here, at least near Topper Wine Road. So to use caution, the fire page does have something on there. Multiple units out there on the scene right now. So as you take a wider look, though, at the map, uh, salt looks like it just popped up here off of I-10. We'll check that out, see how that's impacting the drive time. But as we look at these inbound times, they are still looking pretty good if you're traveling to San Antonio in the next few moments. So uh, nothing big to worry about. No need to rush out the door at this hour, especially if you're coming in from 90 and Casterville. The drive time's still looking pretty good with 20 minutes at this hour. One last look at Transguy 35 at St. Mary's, shaping up to be pretty busy, but we're watching things closely. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. A fire inside a North Sign home is raising a few eyebrows among arson investigators that are saying no one was living in that home, yet flames and smoke broke out late last night. Katrina Weber is live where it happened on Don Ridge Drive near Jackson Keller. And Katrina, you mentioned earlier that neighbors saw a car speeding away from the area. Is there any connection between that and the fire? Well, that's one thing arson investigators are trying to figure out. They say that they are following up on leads about that car. As for the house, it has heavy damage as a result of the fire, which broke out around 9 o'clock last night. Firefighters say flames and smoke were coming out of the home on Donridge Drive when they arrived. They say no one had been living here for about seven years. Still, the house wasn't exactly empty. The previous tenants left some memories behind. There's a lot of furniture buildup on the inside. It's a vacant house, hasn't been lived in for about seven years, but there is still a whole lot of furniture left in the inside and other kind of buildup. All of that furniture and other items made it tough for firefighters to move around and battle the fire. Eventually, they were able to put it out, and they tell us no one was hurt. And again, this case now in the hands of arson investigators. One of their first orders of business will probably be trying to track down that car that they told us about, the car that was seen speeding away from this area. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News.
Thank you, Katrina. Also new this morning, an aggravated robbery suspect now in custody. So this is an old mugshot of 37 year old Jeffrey John Sadisky. According to an arrest affidavit, he tried leaving the Walmart on West Military Drive after stuffing stolen merchandise in his shorts. Then he was confronted outside that store. He threatened an employee with a knife and drove off. That employee got Sadisky's license plate and officers were able to track him down. Now to the growing fallout from the Supreme Court's decision to uphold the new abortion law here in Texas. Several states are now taking steps to pass similar laws. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has more. This morning, a new legal challenge after the state of Texas banned nearly all abortions in the state. Planned Parenthood now filing a restraining order seeking to end the new law's financial incentive. That incentive allows private citizens to sue anyone for helping a woman gain access to an abortion if she's further along than six weeks pregnant because it doesn't have any state official charged with enforcing it. Instead, the ban gets enforced by private parties who can sue any abortion provider or anyone who aids or abets an abortion. There are no exceptions for rape or incest, only for medical emergencies. Texas State the Senator Angela Paxton defending that is, part of the law. It is recognizing that the baby is a human life and abortion ends a human life. Late Wednesday, the Supreme Court rejected a request to block the law. Five conservative justices saying the law should take effect. Now Texas is providing other states with a blueprint to imposing new abortion restrictions without the Supreme Court having to revisit Roe vs. Wade. In the meantime, President Biden is blasting the court's decision, saying it unleashes constitutional chaos and empowers self-anointed enforcers to have devastating impacts. We and White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki uh, engaging on the today. issue uh, with a male reporter. Why does the president support abortion when his own Catholic faith teaches abortion is morally wrong? He believes that it's up to a woman to make those decisions. I know you've never faced those choices, nor have you ever been pregnant. But for women out there who have faced those choices, this is an incredibly difficult thing. A doctor we spoke with in Houston says he typically performs between 20 and 30 abortions per day. But since the new law, he's performed only three. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, New York. A scary scene down in New Zealand. Authorities say they shot and killed a violent extremist today after he entered a supermarket and stabbed six shoppers. The country's prime minister described the incident as a terrorist attack. She says the man was a Sri Lankan national inspired by ISIS. She said he was well known to the nation's security agencies and was being monitored around the clock. But the prime minister says by law he was not allowed to be kept in prison. Authorities say three of the people who were stabbed were seriously injured. And taking a look at coronavirus cases here in Bear County, hospitalizations for COVID-19 patients down to 1,268 patients. 31 of those patients are children. The city also reporting 23 new COVID-related deaths. While the trend in hospitalizations is sloping downward, Metro Health cautions not to let your guard down, especially this Labor Day weekend. This morning, the death toll continues to rise in Ida's aftermath. As CNN's Mandy Gaither reports, at least 46 people have died in the Northeast in the wake of the storm, and the danger is not over yet. Across the Northeast, Ida's record rainfall has ended, but the devastation continues. The emotions here, I, I can speak for everyone. There is only sadness, and it's, it's just overwhelming. From New York to New Jersey and beyond, dozens of people have died in the wake of historic flooding. To wake up and know that we lost some of our fellow citizens simply because they weren't able to get out of their car, they weren't able to get out of their homes. In New York City, storm floods overpowered the subway system. More than 800 passengers were rescued. Governor Kathy Hochul now looking into the response to the storm. Once we get our FEMA assessment done, I'm going to be demanding answers. I want to know who knew what, when, and what could have been done differently. In New Jersey, a submerged train and a stadium underwater. Governor Phil Murphy says an estimated 8 to 10 inches of rain fell in the central part of the state in mere hours, noting it was more than a month's worth of rain at one time. It's never flooded like this. It's never rained like this. So this is by any measure historic. And it's not over yet. Millions remain under flood warnings as all that rain flows into larger bodies of water. Some rivers in the northeast are forecast to remain above flood stage into the weekend.
I'm Mandy Gaither reporting. A reminder, KSAC community is partnering with the Red Cross to collect donations for those impacted by Ida. A Hurricane Ida phone bank is happening later today right here on KSAC. That's from noon to 7 tonight. All you have to do is call. We'll provide that number for you a little bit later on. Uh, for more ways to help out, head to ksatcommunity.com. And time now is 640 and about 78 degrees out there. And we have a breaking traffic update. You're looking live right now where we've got a vehicle that is smashed underneath a, a truck of some sort. This is happening out on the far northeast side, Topper Wine at Loma Azul. And it almost looks like one of those flatbed uh, wreckers or large uh, auto transport vehicles. We don't have any idea about any casualties or fatalities or injuries right now, but obviously this is an active scene. Good news is it's off the major highways. This is just outside some sort of residential area. But again, major accident working. Topper wine at Loma Azul. Looks like that highway right there is completely shut down right now. And coming up next, the important role that trees play in protecting us from extreme weather. We'll be right back. And welcome back at 644. The recent IPCC climate report says we can expect more severe weather in our future from severe drought to more intense sporadic rain events here in San Antonio. But trees can actually help us in both these kinds of events. Sarah Costa spoke with experts to explain how trees combat hot temperatures and storm runoff. Trees do more than just provide shade. They clean our air and keep our city cool. They also help combat storm water. The important thing about trees and to some extent any kind of vegetation is that it helps absorb water as opposed to letting the water run off of an impermeable surface like concrete or, or pavement. Sean Sublet, a meteorologist with the Climate Research Group Climate Central, explains that the deeper the root system, the better. So the more trees you have, typically you will have more absorbent soils nearby. And of course, you'll have the root structures themselves, which all will take in water. All right. So that's the big thing. Climate Central's research shows that by absorbing rainwater, reducing erosion and creating more permeable soils, trees save nearly 400 billion gallons of stormwater runoff in the continental U.S. each year. Climate Central estimates that the number of trees in San Antonio removes 17.7 million tons of carbon dioxide equivalent absorb 290 million pounds of air pollution and fight off 2,751 gallons of storm runoff. Sublet said San Antonio isn't a good spot when it comes to the amount of trees helping us out. It could always be better, uh, but in a pretty good spot, especially compared to, to North Texas and West Texas. However, when it comes to severe flooding, especially in areas by our creek beds and rivers, he says no amount of trees can really prevent flooding from occurring. If you have very, very heavy rain, no amount of trees keep the flooding down, but it does decrease the risk of flooding, small stream flooding and ultimately larger flooding as well. Trees also keep us cool. They act as nature's air conditioners and UTSA is currently doing a study where they're looking at what areas in San Antonio suffer from an urban heat island effect where things like concrete and pavement can radiate more heat and planting more trees could help. I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. All right, everybody, we've been off to a pretty busy start here in San Antonio. The roads, though, at Transguy look fine here from these shots of 410 at Jackson Keller. That doesn't seem to be the issue right now. What we want to do is bring your attention to the map here. There is an incident happening there off Loma Azul near Topper Wine over on the far northeast side. Let's go ahead and take a live look at the ground right now where we do have a crew on the scene. Uh, taking a look right now, we do see this is a live look where we have a vehicle that looks like it went straight under the bed of this wrecker here. Uh, as Mark was mentioning before the commercial break, we're not sure if there's any injuries or any fatalities reported in this crash, but uh, we can tell you this is off of 35, so it's not affecting any of the major highways right now. But as we take a closer look, it does appear that there is some debris on the roadway right now, and that is closed off. And again, this is at Topper Wine and Loma Azul on the far northeast side. We do know this is just near a residential area. So for people that are waking up this morning, they're obviously waking up to quite the mess out there. And you can see as we get a closer look at this shot from our photographer, 
were easy and we see that vehicle went straight under the bed of that uh, truck right there and it's unclear if there were any injuries again. We're not sure if there were any deaths or fatalities reported in this crash. Of course, you can stay with KSAT on air and online for the very latest on this breaking scene. But again, that is right here off Loma Azul near Topper Wine on the far northeast side. We're going to be working to bring you more information as the morning does get going, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah, it looks like one of those uh, truck hauled uh, car carriers yeah. that can hold, you know, maybe three sure. vehicles yeah. or so. Oh, does. Gosh, it does not look good out there. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah. And it's going to be very hot this weekend, I see. Uh, hot for sure. The heat is there, and we got the drought monitor in yesterday. What does it tell us about the drought here in Texas? Well, we're still in good shape, despite the fact we are going into stage one water restrictions. Uh, keep that in mind. But you look out west, it's still a really, really bad situation. Still a lot of wildfires out there. They need some rain desperately in places like California and Nevada. Not so much the case here in Texas. Uh, just 1% of the state is in drought. So really, we are still in good shape. Things may start to change, though, if we continue the pattern that we're in. Medina Lake, 32% full. It's down about two feet since last month, so it is still falling. I mentioned stage one water restrictions. Those went into effect this week. Keep in mind for irrigation watering is once a week, and it has to do with your address. You can water before 11 a.m. or after 7 p.m. and handheld watering is allowed any day any time we go outside pretty nice morning other than obviously it's it's pretty warm 81 degrees Stinson 79 Kelly 75 Randolph east south usually winds at about six miles per hour we have detected a couple showers along the coast a couple of those tried to make it a little further inland but with a little success and we're not seeing much here around San Antonio forecast calls for a couple of isolated storms later today we have been stuck in this pattern really for most of the week. So uh, yes, there could be a couple of storms on radar east of I-35 today, but we're not looking for much. Temperatures, as I mentioned, in the 70s for the most part. Few exceptions. Uh, Del Rio is at 83 right now. That is the warm spot on the map. And the dew points, extremely high. The very sticky air still in place. Uh, the good news is that the, the humidity falls off a little bit this weekend, so the heat index comes down slightly. We're still talking 100s here, but a little better than today. I think the heat index could go as high as 105 here in San Antonio. Could go as high as 108 if you're south and southeast of San Antonio. Uh, so more brutal heat today. Let's look forward in time here. High pressure has been the main player in our forecast uh, last couple days. It will be into the weekend. As we get into Monday, though, it sort of falls apart. A little boundary perhaps comes in from North Texas, and that is forecast to kick off some showers and storms. I think Monday afternoon, Monday evening, your Labor Day plans should be fine still, but uh, just keep in mind there will be a couple of storms, I think, on radar. And as we get into Tuesday, same story, that boundary is still around. We'll have some rain chances uh, Tuesday afternoon. After that, high pressure begins to build back in. This is sort of a stronger ridge of high pressure, and so that's sort of our, our small window there for some rain chances. 99 uh, Saturday, Sunday, lower humidity, Labor Day, 20% chance rain, and a 30% chance on Tuesday. Across the board there, above average temperatures. So this heat is not going anywhere, guys. Uh, but at least there's a small, small, small chance on Monday. There are some shots at rain, low end chances, yep. Okay, thanks, Justin. 651, about 78 degrees. The Delta variant has caused a flight cancellation, having thousands of people stranded. And tomorrow on GMSA, some tips on what to keep in mind when checking on your, li your flight so you can be prepared for that schedule change. Outside with live cam, we'll wrap up the newscast after this. It's Friday. Glad you're with us here on GMSA. Good morning, everyone. We have been off to a very busy start here in the Alamo City and some of our surrounding areas. I-10 at ProBand, we do have a stalled vehicle out there in those westbound lanes, but the big issue right now, as we just showed you, is happening on the far northeast side where we just gave you a live look at a crash that happened out there off Loma Azul and Topper Wine. Neighbors are waking up to a nightmare out there, and we're going to work to get you more information out there, but again, a crash reported off of 35 over in the northeast side there. Uh, we do still have this incident off US 90 eastbound at 36th Street where Textile has reported a crash in that area uh, right now our system picks it up as a stall just use caution if you're traveling to san antonio in the next few moments one last look there at i-10 at proband it is getting very busy with traffic picking up there just in those flashing lights mean move over and slow down thanks sir we're off to a steamy start temperatures up to 98 this afternoon there is a 20 percent chance of a shower or storm and this weekend 
Just hot 99 both days, lower humidity, 20% chance of some afternoon storms Monday, a little better chance Tuesday, but it stays hot all the way through the seven day forecast guys. Oh, there's my dad. Happy birthday, dad. Just want to give a quick shout out to my dad, Julio. He is uh, 59 today. I don't know if I can say that, but there he is. And there is Aww. one photo of us. He's my hero. I've always wanted to be like my dad since uh, as far back as I can remember. Just wanted again, wish him a very happy birthday. We're excited to spend the day with him today. You, uh, I yeah. see the resemblance. Yes. Yes. Very strong. Yeah. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to your dad. Thank happy you. Happy birthday and have a great weekend, guys. Be safe.